everyone. Good morning. Um, and thank you. Thank you, Creative Mornings family, uh, for the invitation and for the warm welcome. Uh, I truly appreciate being here. And um, as I was feeling insecure leading up to this moment, just like, am I the right person to be speaking? Um, uh do I have things that are relevant or um, worth you listening to um, just doing that breakout uh, time? And thank you to my breakout partners. Um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling more and more grounded uh, being here with you. Um, so again, my name is April Friendly. I am a community organizer uh, for mass liberation. Um, with um, the People's Lobby representing South Cook. Um, and that is uh, how us folks down there are rebranding the South suburbs, the Southland of Chicago. We want everyone to for do not forget <laughs> that we are out here. Um, uh, the South suburbs is a part of Cook County too. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, um, and without any further ado, I will uh, go ahead into um, my presentation here. And I, so, <clears throat> um, well, for all of us, we've been experiencing the last um, few months um, and myself since, like literally since the end of uh, electoral campaign in March, um, feeling the impacts and the effects of this pandemic, the, the, the Rona or the, this, this COVID, um, I've had a lot of time to actually like sit back and, and reflect, um, reflect on um, what was working and, and reflect on the things that were not working um, in, in my existence like so in my work life and my home life and actually um on when just before the governor announced that um illinois was going to go into a lockdown we were going to quarantine i had absolutely no idea what that really meant how much time that would take uh what that would entail or just we're going to be locked inside of our homes and for me it was a real time to then look at like what space even do i want to be in um like what's important to me as far as uh surroundings as far as far as like home um and immediately i thought of um you know i needed to be with my partner um you know, um, for security, for protection, for my myself and my heart, um, and even um, for my intellectual space, it, it was it was really clear almost immediately that what is most important um, is like the security of self um, and uh, being lifted up and being in a nurturing um, and loving space is, is absolutely critical to any, um, I feel like, individual to thrive. And then, and then as a community organizer, looking out for people in my community, it, it's like that, I see that um, even exceptionally important on the level of community, but I can't like advocate or push or organize for that authentically on the level of community if I don't have that for myself um, individually. Uh, so I did make a drive to uh, Flint, Michigan uh, to be with my sweetheart, um, Erica, and congratulations, Erica, on being the ninth person. And y'all, we did not know that that was, that was the deal that she got in the queue um, like that. But um, 
Yeah, and so uh, over the last few months, we've actually been taking a lot of time to uh, reflect and create together uh, what does security really look like? What does the life that we want to create, what does uh, nurturing home, nurturing community, what does, what does that look like? What does even Black joy look like? What does excellence look like? What what is really liberation? Um, and as I said earlier, I am an organizer for uh, mass liberation. And for me, um, what that has meant or what that means is, is truly for um, massive, for the masses to have an opportunity to let their humanity shine. Like to be liberated is to be able to be your fuel, your your full human ass self. And so it's like, what does that really mean? I think that pre-COVID, there was a there was like a container for which I saw that there was definitely a, a smaller container for which. Um, our community was engaging in that kind of a conversation. And since um, uh, this COVID and, and um, also the highlights, the highlighting or the new, new spotlight on, and I say new and I'm, being careful here with my words also because um, uh, mass criminalization, mass punishment, uh, mass murder by our militarized policing systems is actually not a new thing. However, the awareness of it, the outcry because of it, um, is something that is being spotlighted or highlighted in a new way. And, and what exactly has um, been the catalyst for that? I mean, like why we are responding newly today, I don't have all those answers, but keep responding, keep responding, and keep responding. And as we are responding, um, newly, I think it's also what is also opening up or what is also new are the 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 containers and the uh, girth for which like what can community look like? What can liberation truly look like? What like, what is possible? What is actually possible? And so I, I do want to take a moment here to just like collectively um, do that, to collectively reimagine. And I appreciate um, Marlene that you put in uh, the slide for us to the opportunity for us to do a collective vision board. And I would like us to collectively, but like individually um, take up space here together and just for yourself, think about, reimagine, like what is actually possible? Um, oops, my remote is going a little faster than I wanted. Yo, okay, um, but we're just gonna flow here with it. Um, because as I often operate in insecure spaces, I'm trusting this community and I'm reimagining more sustainable security because even as we mess up and let our humanities shine out like we're gonna mess up like <laughs> we're gonna stumble or we're gonna trip but like the beautiful thing is like we actually have community to hold us up like we're not supposed to do it all by ourselves we need one another side by side shoulder to shoulder. Reimagine what else is possible. Think about those moments when you felt safe, just truly safe. 
Even close your eyes and think about that time when you just laughed unabashedly and you didn't think about anything coming in to threaten your happiness. You didn't think about anything, anybody coming in to steal your joy. You may have to even go back to when you were a little kid, when you were in your grandmama's arms, when you were laying in your daddy's lap, when you were just walking through the bushes with your friends, feeling the toe, feeling the, feeling the, the, the grass and your toes, or maybe it was the sand or the water. Just reimagine and journey, journey with me. Journey with me down these streets of hope. Journey with me where communities have a new scope, possibilities of growth, diseases that no longer choke, children of the pavement, beautifully sculpted encasements. I live here. We thrive here. My people are fine here. I love to feel the sounds of success blowing over my ears. Growing pains equal the investments made for our family's futures here. My neighborhood walls truly claim justice and liberty for we all get to stand tall. Journey with me. Journey with me as we visit our ancestral pride and glory and the advancements we've contributed over the years. The years grow young as our families dance and legacies are sung. Like baby birds who today are nesting, then tomorrow testing their wings in flight. Flocks circling back to peacefully sing home at night. Journey with me. Journey with me to a tune that feels right in your soul. You have soul. I am soul. Being human. Don't fright. My melanin is not a weapon. And when I say I can't breathe, it's because I mean I cannot breathe. Hands up. Don't shoot. Now a protesters, excuse me, innocent salute. My siblings continue to take the streets through riot gears and shattered tears. Thing is, we're all people too. Black lives better matter, better matter. Black lives better matter. Baby cries, breast milk supplies. Black mama's been feeding us for generational years. Now we all have trauma filled tears. Hold your silence. Systemic looting is violence. My people, my people shine your pride on me. My people, June, October, February, it's another Juneteenth and I'm still free-ish. Still, journey with me. Journey with me for another dish of melting pots. Let's raise praise together and create a new whatever. Whatever else can we create as possible? And yes, DJ Mike, let's go. Let's go. Let's go together. Let's go together, y'all. Let's go together. And I tell you, 
for me, Black Joy, my family, the love, the pride. Let's go together, continuing to lift up Black love, Black beauty. Let's go together. In my notes, hold up one second. Sorry, I have some things written down there. <clears throat> Ooh, thank you for being with me, with me, y'all. Thank you for allowing my humanity to to shine free. I I truly appreciate that. Um, and I'm I'm just really touched because, yeah. <laughs> Black excellence is excellence. Excellence is Blackness, is us together, is humanity. Like Black love as Black love is family, family legacies, y'all. Black love is love. It has to answer to no boundaries. Like these are my people. My real people show up in all types of shades and shapes and sizes and who we love to love and so my person my personal work is also my professional work i don't believe any people nobody no people belong in cages before the COVID and during the COVID where our prisons are now absolutely petri dishes for disaster. And I wanna repeat that, they're petri dishes for disaster. There was an existing health crisis before the COVID and now that it's just exasperated. So free them all, yes. People do not belong in cages, whether you're a juvenile, whether you are undocumented or not on somebody's document or in somebody's database because they want to document. People do not belong in cages. Free them all. And this is the work that I embark in on a regular. And as we also talk about shutting down these systems, defunding the prisons, defunding the jails, defunding the sheriff's department, defunding the police, we also have to simultaneously talk about what is it that we want to lift up? What do we want to build up? And we need to be talking about that together. We need to be simultaneously building up community. We need to be looking at what do we take from our past? What is the inspiration that we want to feed off of? Talk to our people. We need to take over collectively. The people need to take over our electoral politics. We need to have representatives that represent us. And we need to continue to take back the streets so we can also collectively hold down our homes, take back our neighborhoods as well. All of these institutions that are tax dollars, that our hard earned dollars go towards, need to represent us, need to reflect us. So I have, as Marlene said, been working as a community organizer, organizing people in the community for collective good um, since 2012. Um, before that time, I was slinging groceries at Whole Foods Market. I didn't even know what a community organizer was. I mean, even as um, uh, Barack Obama came onto the scene, community organizer became a conversation that was kind of like, or it became a, a, a thing that was put into public conversation. I still truly did not have an understanding of what that was and, um, not until actually I engaged one-on-one -on -one with people who were doing this work, activist work, but activist 
um, on a level of collective. Um, so inside of organizing, when we say activist, it's kind of like you're an individual who goes out for a cause that you believe in and you want to stand strong for. Um, and, and, and organizing is distinct in that, like, you're, you're still you going out for a cause that you believe in and you're standing up for, but you're also then bringing other folks with you. Um, and so in 2012, um, literally after being um, fired um, from Whole Foods where I had been working for about 12 years at that point in time, because um, I was no longer um, flowing with the okie doke, um, you know, uh, and calling out the, the, the oppressive behavior. I didn't use that language at the time. It was um, more like I called out the good old boys club that was advancing um, just the good old boys. So if you, you got to invite to the yacht club or you got the invite to the golf club, you got that promotion. And I was never invited and um, continually passed over and then just disgruntled and disgruntled. And, and then, you know, that kind of put me on a search for something else, something more meaningful. Um, and I ran into folks who were organizing people to, um, you know, have clean neighborhoods or to keep their homes. Uh, and I was like, that's a thing? <laughs> I can, like, do that? Uh, constructively, I actually, I could actually get paid for that. That meant something to me. Um, so I began actually on the north side um, in Rogers Park with the Just Harvest, um, then uh, as a volunteer, and then moved into East Chicago, uh, Indiana, um, in Northwest Indiana, working with folks around a literacy campaign. Um, and then, and then what became blaringly obvious is that people are like, uh, systemically being pushed out of jobs. So then we worked on jobs and then as we, I'm working with, um, families around the literacy campaign, families also who uh, had been, um, uh, 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 unemployed for such a long time that they were no longer counted on the unemployment rolls. Then we find out that their their land is um, their homes are contaminated uh, with lead. Um, they're living on a super fun site um, because their public housing, their school, the senior home were built on an old smelter plant. So basically built on top of an old a wasteland, um, and now the the soil had lead, and um, it was contaminated to the point where it was no longer considered habitable by our esteemed EPA, and so folks had to evacuate. Um, and then we began an environmental justice campaign, um, and uh, as we then uh, move from there. I also uh, work, some of these people were then being impacted by the incarceration system. Some people were being locked up simply because they were poor. Like there were literally transient people who were moving around, who could not hold down a job, who were then even maybe shoplifting or stealing diapers and then being locked up and then come to find out not only in Indiana, but in Illinois, our Cook County Jail was made up predominantly of folks who were there because literally they were poor, could not afford a hundred dollar bail. Um, so the, the real injustices of our incarceration system became glaring to me. And then I um, started actually working on that campaign as well. Well, and yes, we do need to end the bail system. We do need to end cash bail. And that is currently where I have been spending um, 
most of my energies the last uh, two and a half, three years has been working um, to abolish these systems of injustice. Like right now in Cook County, right now in Cook County Jail, where the population of the county is about 13% black folks, our jail consists of 73% 73, 73 of the folks who are in jail are black, 17% Latinx. You can see that on the slide. And we need to free them all. We need to free them all, y'all. And yes, abolishing the prison system is absolutely something that I stand for, I work for, I fight for, um, I organize for. Uh, and just last week, we had a rally um, down at Cook County Jail to uh, not only defund the police or defund the jail and the sheriff's department and all of its policing agencies, all of its incarceral, all of its carceral agencies, which include the courts, even which includes the um, uh, the prosecutorial um, department. I mean, uh, not only while so while we're doing that, I'm sorry, I got a little distracted. So while we're also fighting to defund the jail, we need to be, like I said earlier, be working to also fund our communities. And so while we had this action, which was last week on the 18th, that day we also introduced a resolution to our Cook County Board of Commissioners. Um, for those of you who don't know, our county board. The Cook County Board is responsible for our Cook County budget, a budget which overwhelmingly funds our jailing and incarceral systems. Over $600 million of our county dollars go to our jails and our sheriff's department each year, even as the population of the jail declines. And since we have been doing this work, even to uh, free people from Cook County to, as we've been uh, ending cash bail, doing the work to end cash bail, we have seen about a 33% decrease in the population. They've closed a block of Cook County jail since we've started doing this work. We've had um, initiatives passed um, but as they, as they, the population still decreases, the funding for the jail, the funding for the sheriff's department still continually goes up. So the fight still continues. And again, simultaneously, $600 million, $600 million. Yes, over a quarter of our Cook County budget funds go towards our jail system. And so as simultaneously as we talk about defunding the jail, defunding the sheriff's department, we also need to be talking about how do we want those monies reallocated. And so we did introduce a resolution, a resolution titled Justice for Black Lives, um, co-sponsored by uh, or in partnership with County Commissioner Brandon Johnson of the First District, any Oak Park people here. Any Austin West Side folks here? That is your commissioner. Shout out to him. Um, and we had seven or thirteen commissioners sign on um, to that resolution, the resolution Justice for Black Lives, and which is a, a um, which is a, a resolution that is to be a framework um, for how our county prioritizes monies that are spent. Like we think that the majority of the money should actually go to funding our communities, funding healthcare, funding schools, funding infrastructure. And things of that nature. So my time is up y'all. Um, and I didn't get to get to the point where we see like we, we, where we really take a look at what are the barriers? What is in the way? From right privilege to white supremacy to just truly inequities.
purely inequities. Um, what is in the way? What is in the way? That is blocking all of our humanities, all of our humanities that shine. And I, I want to insert, I just inserted this folk picture here. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you folks remember Grant Park um, in 08. What day was that? November election. I, I can't even remember the exact date. I should have <laughs> gotten that together. Um, I, and and this, fo this photo is not about Barack Obama. I want to be clear about that. But it is about that energy, that possibility, that feeling, that belief in hope, that belief in something else is possible. If you weren't in Grand Park that night, you missed a truly transformational space. Yeah, James. It, I, I mean, it was awesome just extraordinary, extraordinary. White folks, black folks, brown folks, able-bodied folks, disabled-bodied folks, people from all over the South side, the North side, the West side, from out of town, from every town, just believing that we can do, we can create together. So what is in the way, y'all? And I'm gonna <clears throat> leave us there and uh, open it up for questions. I'll right, turn it back over to our illustrious host, Marlene. Thank you again for the invitation and for the space to share and create and be blessed here. Thank you. <laughs>